stand unto this word of God. Everybody ready for the word of God today? Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for being awesome, God. Lord, I decrease as you increase. Lord, speak through my mouth, speak through my vocal cords. Every ear is anointed to hear. Every heart is good ground to receive the incorruptible word of God. Lord, thank you that victory goes before us. Thank you, God, that your spirit goes before us. Satan, you have no place, no lot in this service. We plead the blood of Jesus over this sanctuary. We plead the blood of Jesus over Journey Kids and over this service. God, we thank you that your angels are here walking to and fro. Nothing moves except the spirit of God in this place. And God, we give you the praise and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. 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 So we, we've been in this epic journey reading the whole Bible this year. Last, last, last Sunday, we talked about the walls of Jericho coming down, we talked about Rahab, the prostitute, the lady who knew how to twerk, but she turned her life around for the Lord. She knew how to, what she was doing. She knew what she was doing. She was a professional. But she had sense enough, amen, she had sense enough to know when the people of God came through to submit her will and her whole house was saved. And then last week, it was such a powerful time in the word after the service where we all declared that me and my house will serve the Lord. Now, I don't know. We, pro we proclaimed it on Sunday, but did you do it on Monday and Tuesday? <laughs> did you and your house serve the Lord in traffic? I hope so. Amen. So this week, we are talking about you know, Hollywood loved to rip off stories from the Bible. And one of my favorite movies, 300, was a direct ripoff of the Bible. We're talking about Gideon this week. 300. Anybody have seen 300 besides me? Don't make me feel, okay, amen, amen. It was bloody, but it was good. Come on, somebody. Amen, you Game of Thrones watchers, I know you ain't here. Mm-hmm, Jesus know. Let's jump into this word. We're going to start off in Judges, the sixth chapter. So if you have the Bible app, just go ahead and, and do that. If you have a, if your cell phone isn't on silence, please do it. We don't want to hear uh, the Beatles playing today. And if you need a Bible, we have some. You can just lift your hand. And if you have a 20, you can weigh that. An usher will get you a Bible quicker. You'll get one quicker. Judges 6. Now, it's, it's a lot. I always ask God, Lord, show me something. That was the force. I'm like, God, show me something in this word that I haven't seen before. I want to pull out some of the good juices. We know how Gideon in, but I, I've seen some stuff in the word of God that, that I think we can relate to Gideon, all of us. Because I believe if we were back in Judges, we would be Gideon. So Judges 6, it start off like this. The people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian seven years. That's very important. The people were doing evil, right? And verse 4 says, in Israel was brought very low because of Midian. And the people of Israel cried out for help to the Lord. Isn't that amazing? They do the same thing we do. We'll get in trouble because we want to do what we want to do. And when we find out our way was horrible, we say, Lord, Lord, help me. And then God is looking at you like it. So I could have just imagined God sitting on the throne. He said, okay, I brought them out of slavery. We crossed the Red Sea. I did all these miracles, and they still went back. And we all have done it, right? God will perform a miracle in our lives, and then the next day we are back to business, not the Father's business. 
In verse 9 it says, And I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians, and from the hand of all who opposed you, and drove them out before you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. God just, he's always a reminder of his goodness. A lot of times, if we just remember how good God has been in our lives, we can stay on the straight and narrow path. It's when we don't think about God's goodness. The Bible declares if we keep our mind on the Lord, he'll keep us in perfect peace. Perfect peace. You ever had that real good prayer in the morning, and when you go to work, everybody's getting on everybody else's nerves, and it's just missing you like, whoo! That prayer game is strong. And the Lord is just saying, you got to be reminded how good I am. So God sent an angel to this dude named Gideon. And this angel just came out of nowhere. He sat on a rock. And let's see how this happened. And it said, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you. Oh, mighty man of valor. I would love for an angel to appear in front of me and say, the Lord is with me. Now, some of us would have been scared if an angel came up to us and like, the Lord is with me. <laughs> you know, because it's there, amen. It's there, it's there. And Gideon said to him, please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up out of, from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hands of Midian. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hands of Midian. Do not I send you? And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. A lot of things jumped out at me in that passage of Scripture. Now, when, he, when, when Gideon said, please, Lord, if the Lord be with us, he didn't say, please, Lord, like, please, can I have some more blessing? He was like, please, like, please. <laughs> Ladies, you know when that dude come up to you and, from a bicycle and you in your car. <laughs> and he... And he's asking you, he's like, can I get it? No, you like, boy, bye. <laughs> That's how Gideon was. It's like, uh, oh, mighty man of valor. He's like, please, look at me. Now, three things stuck out in this conversation with Gideon and this angel. One, Gideon doubted God. That's the first thing. He doubted God. Gideon questioned God. And then Gideon blamed God. He was like, what? Where was God when we were in the hands of these people? Now, do you remember the first verse that we read? We said, the people did evil. Now, that's the thing Gideon forgot. No, 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 y'all was the one out in them streets tricking. That mean doing everything that's not of God. He doubted an angel of the Lord. And then he said, how can I be a mighty man when I'm the weakest in my house? The reason I, I, I think we can all relate to God, to Midian, is when the Lord tell us things, we always give an excuse of self-reflection of who we think we are of who people said we were. Midian was the least. How many of you guys know that God cannot lie? 
I don't care how you look. If the Lord said you're mighty, you might as well start trying to pick up a car. <laughs> but Midian didn't see it. He believed what he saw instead of what of God said. He said, please, Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? It was because you was in sin, you crazy man. And where was his wonderful works? They're like, what? You know, we do the same thing. We'll come to church. We hear awesome messages Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and we will still walk out those doors and doubt God. We'll walk out them doors and we're like, Phew. That was good. It made me feel good. No, no, no. Forget your feelings. Feelings aren't facts. The fact is what God said. Do you believe the word or not? Yeah. Amen. He, and it said, then he, he said to Gideon, go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. He didn't just tell him he was mighty. He gave him a mission. And Gideon doubted God. I think it's amazing that you can see an angel and still doubt. We've seen miracles in this church. You know, we've seen the, the power of God flow through this place. And it's amazing to me that we will still doubt God. If the Bible says, by his stripes you are healed, and if the Bible is the final authority in our lives, and by his stripes we're healed, why aren't we healed? It can't be a God problem because he's perfect. It got to be us. It got to be something in us that's making us doubt God. Something is wrong and we need God to make it right. Amen? Amen. When I love the disciples. They told, they told Jesus, they said, Jesus, help me with my unbelief. Sometimes we, gotta, we, we can read this word and we know our thoughts doesn't line up with what the word says. So sometimes we need to say, God, help us with our unbelief. And Gideon, he heard everything he needed to hear, and he still didn't move. We know the outcome of the story, but in the, but in the beginning, he didn't see it. He seen a mirror of what everybody said about him. I don't care what people have said about you. If God didn't say it, it's a lie. I'm going to come over here because y'all sleep. I don't care what people have said about you. If you don't read it in the word, if, you didn't, if they didn't say you are beautifully and wonderfully made, you are the righteousness of God, if that's not it, then it's a lie. Verse 14 says this, And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you. And he said to him, please, boy, by Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest. Not just me, but the people who I'm around are weak. God, how can, you know, thank God for praying mamas in here. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God for praying daddies in here. Amen, amen. When you're a praying mom and you're saying, God saved my children and they still out there acting a the fool, you got to, something got to click in you and you got to stand on that promise of I'll save you in your whole household. Gideon said, how can I save Israel when all I see is weakness. It's not what we see with these natural eyes, but if God says something, that's what we have to stand on. The Bible proclaims we walk by faith and not by sight. If we, hallelujah, if we keep, if we keep majoring on what we see, we're never going to believe God. Sometimes you got to close your eyes and be like, God, you got it. Sometimes you got to give it to God. Yes, they in the club. Yes, they doing what they do. Yes, they smoking everything that's magical. Yes, yes, yes. But if you believe the God that you serve and stand on his word and you give it to God, you know, 
That's some of the hardest stuff. Believing God is easy. Believing that we can do things is the difficult part. If God gave you a talent, it's, it's easy to be like, well, God gave me this talent. I believe he wants to prosper me. I just don't know if I can do it. You're just like Midian, Gideon. He's looking in the mirror. His self-reflection is broken. We need to look at ourselves how God sees us. You need to look in the mirror one day and declare what God has said about you. If somebody lied to you, you know, you know, you know, we all done been in bad relationships where people done treated us wrong, they even called you ugly, they, they said you look like Yogi Bear, they saying all this stuff. But Jesus didn't say any of that. Sometimes you might need to call out those words people said to you and crush them in that mirror. You need to line up what they said and what God said, and you need to determine that the, what the Word said is going to win in my life today. You need to walk out your house. Amen. You need to walk out your house saying, God, thank you that the victory is going before me. If Midian would have had a grasp that God gave him the victory in that instant, he should have picked up his sword and started running towards those people because he already had a victory. Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, but I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. Gideon doubted God. Gideon told God, who he thought he was. Gideon told God who he has been taught his people was. He forgot what Moses did. He forgot about the battle of Jericho. He forgot all of this stuff. We need to remember God's goodness. If you're a note taker, one thing you need to take a note of, I need to remember God's goodness in my life. I dare you to go home today. Get out a pencil pad or your phone. Tell Siri to pull up your notepad and jot down every blessing you have received in your life. I dare you, not even your life the last two years. You'll look at this blessing, you'll look in the mirror and you'll say, I cannot be stopped. I am blessed. I'm highly favored. God is with me. Every time I turn around, God is sending a blessing. I was talking to a, a dear lady this weekend, and she was telling me the problems that she had, and I, and I just thought to myself, I'm like, man, if she, if she just remember the last time she was drowning in debt and how God brought her out, she would just dry them tears and be like, okay, I know it's just a matter of time for God to work this thing out. Fear struck Gideon. Fear struck him because the task was so big. When you've been oppressed, and downtrodden and depressed about a certain thing for so long, it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But the word of God is that light. It reminds me of this guy. He was out bird watching. He was a man of God. And he believed that, you know, when he prayed, things happened. So he was out bird watching and he was in the field and he froze. And right across from him, about 40 feet, was a Kodak bear. And he just froze. And he bowed his head. He said, God, thank you that I have dominion and that you've given me dominion over all the animals of the field. Thank you for safety. Thank you, God, that you are going to give me the victory and nothing is going to happen to me. Lord, you take control of this animal. And God, I thank you that I will walk out of here unscathed, untouched by this bear. I know he's stronger than me, but nothing is stronger than you. And he looked up, and he looked in amazement because that bear head was bowed. 
And that bear said, Father, thank you for this food that we're about to receive. <laughs> And he looked up at that man and he charged at him and that man took out and he went to this house. He, get, he slammed the door. The bear hit the door. Boom! He dropped that log. You, what's the thing called with the log? Y'all know what I'm talking about. He dropped it. The bear couldn't get in. Boom, boom, boom. He just sat there. The bear was just rattling on the house. About 30 minutes passed. He looked out the window. The bear, ah! He, he dropped his head back. So then an hour passed and that bear left. When was the man safe? Was he safe in the house? Or was he safe when he said, Father, in the name of Jesus? We got to know who's with us. That angel told Gideon, she's still laughing. <laughs> that angel told Gideon, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. In your notes, ev above everything that has ever been said about you, believe what God says about you. I mean, above it all, can you trust God? Above it all, above every argument, above every put down, above every disappointment, can you believe what God said about you? Amen. We have to, amen, amen. We have to remind ourselves what the Lord said. Verse 19 says this. So Gideon went into his house and prepared a young goat and 11 cakes from an ephah of flour, the meat he put in a basket. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I forgot. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Go back to 17. And he said to him, for I, if now I have found favor in your eyes, then show me a sign that it is you who speak with me. Please do not depart from here until I come to you and bring out my present and set it before you. And he said, yes, I will stay till you return. We all do it. Gideon was like, well, it, if I'm supposed to save Israel, you need to show me a sign. Show me a sign, but don't wait. I need to give you a gift. I, I, I love that mindset because sometimes when God do stuff for us, we forget about God. Hey Amen. You don't got to say nothing. I know. You don't have to say nothing. I know I'm right. God will heal us, and we'll forget God did it. Amen. Gideon said, I'm going to bring a gift. Me, personally, I'll bring a gift to, to God's house. I, you know, I'm not saying we got to break the bank, but if God do something, why not bless the Lord God's house? Why not give God honor? Why not tell the world what God did? God will bless us and we'll keep our mouths shut. What if you believed that God was with you? What if you believe that this salvation that you have is so wonderful? Why aren't we telling the world that God saved us? Why are we being like Gideon and doubting God, blaming God, forsaking God? When God has done so much, we should be telling everybody. They should have some of us in straitjackets about some of the stuff God did for us. Amen. God did what for you? Yes, he did. Uh -uh. Lock them up. That can't be true. God has done so much for you. If you just think about and review what the Lord has done. Verse 19, so Gideon went into the house and prepared a young goat and 11 cakes from an ephah of flour. The meat he put in a basket in the broth. Mm, broth, come on somebody. He put in the pot and brought them to him under the terebinth and presented them. And the angel of the Lord said to him, take the meat and the unleavened cake and put them on this rock and pour the broth over them. This angel knew how to cook, come on. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord reached out to the tip of the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened cake and fire sprung up from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cake. That was the first George Foreman grill, wasn't it? <laughs> see, if people, see, 
if those inventors was reading the Bible right, I was like, now how the angel did that? I need to make some money. That's whoop, entrepreneurship. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. And then Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord. And Gideon said, alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Verse 25, we're going to drop. That night, the Lord said to him, take your father's bull and the second bull seven years old and put down the altar of Baal that your father has and cut down the Asherah that is beside it. When we recognize that God is for us, is with us, for us, and he wants to use us, we need to tear down and destroy everything in our lives that doesn't please him. Amen. When you figure out that you are unstoppable, when you figure out that God is with you, everything in your life that don't please God, you need to destroy it. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about those things you hide from your spouse. I'm talking about everything. When you know that holy God is with you, you destroy it all. Gideon recognized God wanted him to be holy. He said, oh, he got it now. He got it. He got it. Now, go make this thing right. Get those false idols out your father's house. Get those things that displease me from around you. I want to use you. Some people will come to church and will say, you know, I know God got a call in on my life. Man, I know God want to do all of these great things in my life. I just don't know what's holding me up. I'll tell you what's holding up. What's in your life that's not pleasing him? Who is in your life that's not pleasing God? What do you say? What do you think? That when God is listening to your thoughts, don't please him. What's around us? Guess what? You got the power to destroy. Well, I don't want to. That's been my friend since high school. That's been, so what? The Bible says, if you love me, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love God, destroy those things in your life that don't please him. Get rid of those things in your life. That, that when you know you're coming to church in the back of your mind, you're like, oh my God, I hope nobody asks me about that. I'm so shamed. You don't need to be shamed. You know, we always say, come as you are. Yes, come as you are. We want you as you are. I don't care if you've been to the club last night, the hookah lounge, in the club doing a split, dropping it like it's hot, picking it back up, <laughs> twerking. I don't care. Come as you are. You're a descendant of Rahab. Come as you are. But God didn't die for you to stay the same. Amen. Amen. He didn't die for you to stay the same. Oh, Jesus, I ran out of time. Help me, Lord. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Drop down to Judges 7 and 2. The Lord said to Gideon, The people with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand. Least Israel boast over me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Put this in your notes. Do not forget who gave you every victory. Do not forget who gave you every victory. The credit, the glory, all the glory belongs to God. I know you got a promotion on your job. Don't forget who gave you that victory. I know God gave you, reconciled your relationship with your daughter and your son. Don't 
forget who gave you that victory. I know you almost got sideswiped on 295. Don't forget who gave you that victory. All glory belongs to God. We'll think it's us. We'll do something good and be like, oh, you're so good. You're so talented. No, uh -uh, mm -mm. God be praised. Because without him, none of this stuff will be possible. Verse 9 says this. That same night, the Lord said to him, arise, go down against the camp, for I have given it into your hands. But if you are afraid to go down, go down to the camp with pure your servant. And you shall hear what they say. And afterward, your hand shall be strengthened to go down against that camp. God is so merciful. God knew that Gideon was full of doubt. And he said, listen, 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 listen. Listen, little man. Listen, Linda. Look, Linda, look. If you're still scared, just go down to the camp, and when you hear what they said, your hand will be strengthened. God not only cares about how the victory is won, he cares about who getting the victory. God cared about Gideon. He cared about where his heart was. He cared about where his soul was. He knew that Israel needed somebody strong, and it wouldn't be a victory if he didn't chop it the whole army down to 300 men. They said, at least they boast. God didn't want anybody to get no mistake that it was all him who gave them the victory. Philippians said this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What in your life are you procrastinating to do? What has God told you to do that you've been delayed on? I can't do it because of what? Because of what? You need to ask yourself, why have I not done that thing? And then you need to say, I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. And we have no excuse because God is strengthening us. And if God is with you, who can be against you? The last note. God can take a defeated man and give him the victory. Wherever you defeated at in your life, God wants you to have a victory. Jesus never tasted defeat. God is undefeated. Our God has never lost. He never suffered a loss. He's not like LeBron in this series, down two to one. He's never seen a loss. And if God never seen a loss and he's living in us, why do we keep losing? Why do we keep accepting defeat? We don't have to accept anything except for the word of God. If God said it, I believe in it, and that settles it. Above everything that has been said, ever said about you, believe what God has said about you. Do not forget who gave you every victory. All the glory belongs to God. God can take a defeated man like me and give me the victory. Amen. Wherever you defeated at, wherever you have self-doubt, any place in your life that you see yourself less than, the Lord saying you are more than a conqueror, you are more than a conqueror. See, and just like we said in the beginning, you'll hear this word and leave these doors. I said, that was some good preaching, but did you believe it? The Lord has given you so much. He has given you the victory over and over and over again. It said, remember the Lord your God. For he, it is he who given you power to contain wealth. Wealth and wealth. And we're not talking about finances right now. Wealth in your mind. Peace in your heart. Peace in your house. Who wants peace in their house? Amen, somebody. Peace in your house. If God gave it to you, then you need to accept that win and walk in it. Bow your heads all over this building. Father, we thank you for giving us the victory. We thank you, Lord, 
that you are undefeated. We thank you that we are healed. We thank you that we recognize that your word is true. Because the Bible says, let the word of God be true and let every man be a liar. So God, we thank you that the truth of God surrounds us. The truth of God is in us. The truth of God goes before us. And as every head is bowed and eyes closed, if this is your first time here and you're looking for a good church, this is a super good church. If you have never received Jesus as Lord of your life and you want to live an undefeated life through Christ, I'll just ask you to lift up your hands if you never received Jesus as Lord and you want to receive him today. Amen. And if, any, and if you have took a step back from serving the Lord in a backslidden state and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, just lift your hands up. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. It look like everybody want to go to heaven today. Praise God. So God, we thank you for this word. I ask you to bless the hearers, not just the hearers, bless the doers of this word, God. Lord, I just pray over Journey Church, God, that victory goes before us, that this week will be a, a week of wins. God, we pray over Tyler and Molly's wedding today, God, that their lives are blessed that people will see them, not knowing them, and say the hand of the Lord is on them. And God, we thank you for giving us wins this week, and we thank you for loving us, keeping us, healing us, surrounding us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>